Fair enough. Well, the next match we got uh, we have coming up is equally interesting, with the Celestial Empire going up against Psychotic Tendencies. And Psychotic Tendencies are definitely not what we uh, the team that we all had penciled in here, with them leading a massive upset versus the Initiative perennial tournament uh, mid tier to upper mid tier teams. Uh, executing well with a Mimitar rush comp against uh, a very unconventional Rodiva triple TFI composition from the initiative. What were you guys' thoughts on that match? Tempest Fleet is just charging into slips. What are you doing? That was that was my, my, my thought the entire fight. Why are you charging slips? I was so unhappy with that. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of... A bit... Bit of a weird comp, and Tissue brought kind of an on meta comp, and they just ended up actually getting uh, the first slam dunk victory of uh, the tournament by actually killing Initiative without losing a single ship of their own, 100 to 0. Yeah, and I have to say, we have some very interesting bans for this upcoming match as well, with Psychotic Tendencies banning the Dragoon and the Noctis, a ship that's not even able to be brought in the tournament to begin with whereas the Celestial Empire have banned Slepnir and Barghest. Do you think that that's any, any sort of a signal from Psychotic Tendencies, or is it just pure shitposting? It's tissue. It's shitposting. It, it, it's tissue, man. I, I think they, they've realized that they're fighting against like a crab alliance, from what I can tell, so they've decided they're going to take away the Noctis, which is you know a crucial ship for all crabs. Yeah, well, let's see how the game plays out. Do you guys have any predictions to start with? Any gut feelings when it comes to this match? With the bands, it's hard to tell. They're really like it's like where where are these people going? Obviously, Tissue is just throwing everything out the window, so they might still go for a shield rush. Looks like Celestial banned out the Slepnir immediately, not the Nighthawk. So maybe they're banning out the comp that Tissue brought, thinking it might shake them a bit. But it's it's really hard to see what they're trying to go for here. It's going to be a very yeah. wait. wait. Yeah, Celestial, Celestial uh, Empire's uh, bands are pretty standard. Step their bar guess, you know, they're just two pretty good bands. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Tissue's ban of the Noctis and the Dragoon is uh, very amusing, I guess. Uh, they're, they're very confident. We'll see if, uh, see if it ends up being hubris or not. Hello, everyone. I am Miss, and with me is uh, DTM135. And uh, this is match number two of day number two of the feeder rounds. We're having uh, uh, Celestial Empire in red and uh, Psychotic Tendencies uh, in blue. And uh, uh, DTM, can you tell me about what these teams uh, brought on grid? Yeah, so Psych uh, Psychotic Tendencies brought a Nighthawk comp coming in at zero, like true gamers sitting right on that beacon. They want to brawl people down. They want to go in for the frags, the kills, you know. They don't need Noctises to go ahead and salvage up the grid. That's why they banned it. They don't really care about the loot. They're elite PvPers. And uh, Celestial uh, Empire, of course, bringing a Drek comp with Double Curse, which is interesting. I haven't seen a Double Curse comp yet this tournament. Not a match that I've watched, at least. Uh, with the Deacons, um, I also see a Kerr on their comp, which is going to be interesting for the webs and the application. But lots of new pressure coming out of Celestial Empire. Yeah, these uh, sh uh, ships definitely feel a lot of neutering uh, power. Even the Dracovics uh, got the utility highs of feeling, uh, feeling energy neutral. But they have one big problem, and that is that only one ship of the Tissue team actually needs Capacitor to shoot. The rest of the ships are going to launch missiles and don't need Capacitor for that. And the only things they really need Capacitor for is their prop mod and their, their hardness. So I don't really see these nodes being that effective uh, in the setup. Yeah, it's absolutely going to also come down to if there's enough new pressure on grid to actually shut off comps or, more importantly, shut down both of those Kirins and make them not able to rep. That's going to be a huge benefit to them. If I were sitting in Celestial Empire's place, I would be trying to navigate my curses, navigate my core, back around the uh, enemy group and get back around to those Karens and actually get new pressure onto them. That's my personal call, though. I'm not an elite tissue FC, so I would I would have no idea. Yeah, and the match just begun. And the one thing about the warbin is that these curses are actually within neutering ranges of these uh, Kirins. And uh, you can see that the entire red team are burning away as fast as they can. Uh, the frigates seem to be lagging a little behind. I think the crew is trying to um, to screen or maybe he's uh, AB fit. But he got webbed and he's taking a lot of damage, so he's not going to live long. 
Yeah, the Drex also taking a lot of damage. Kerr taking some damage, also receiving reps as well. If he's a B fit, he's going to get some damage mitigation off. Meanwhile, Celestial Empire starting to work on the Orthrus of Dremond. Uh, he is looking to start running into about half shield. The question is, are those Cairns going to be able to get those reps off um, and actually keep him up? Meanwhile, the core is looking pretty healthy. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Sushi team uh, swapped to the uh, Dracovic of uh, Eri instead. And uh, that Dracovic, if it goes down, is a lot of damage of the uh, red team uh, being away. In the meantime, there's a bit split DPS on the uh, tissue team. Uh, the Orphrus was initially uh, primary, but uh, he's recovered, and there's some damage on the Nighthawk of uh, Hans uh, Bundestad instead. Yeah, absolutely. All three Nighthawks going on the Drek right now, getting him web, getting him scrammed. I'm watching him, helpless to do anything as the Nighthawks absolutely decimate them. Meanwhile, they lose a Deacon in the background. Things are not looking good for Celestial Empire. They're gonna have to start picking it up. One Deacon left, the core is not healthy. They have to make plays right now. They have to change up whatever strat they originally got. It's out the window. They have to pick something new. So the thing about this setup uh, the Tissue brought is that they have two Jackdaws and an Orphrus for uh, Rapid uh, Light and the uh, Light Missiles. And then they have these uh, Loki for Long Range Rapid Fire. So this is a really dangerous uh, place to be if you're a Frigate Pilot. And uh, we so you saw that the Deacon just get volleyed off and this crew is not uh, going to live for long anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Waiting for uh, those reloads on the Orthrus and they're really going to pound down on that core. You know, I believe personally at this moment, if the Drek was a Stabber Fleet issue, it probably would have lived. That's just my personal opinion after seeing yesterday. Um, maybe Celestial Empire next year can learn a little bit from their mistakes and just bring a full Stabber Fleet comp. Um, we will absolutely see, though. Yeah, Stabber Fleet issue is definitely a fast uh, cruiser that could uh, mitigate some of this missile DPS, but do keep in mind that Tissue do have a uh, Loki and they have the Chat uh, Moa. Uh, don't estimate this little take one crew shot can fit a really nice uh, shield tank and some good uh, blaster DPS. And uh, seeing yeah. that the Star Conqueror is chasing one down one of the Dracoviks, uh, just harassing uh, that uh, Dracovic running away from uh, from a single guy in a MOA. <laughs> There's so much DPS on grid too. Watch as the Deacon's about to drop as well as the Curse and Armor taking damage right now. And the Deacon goes back down. The Curse going into hull right now. Also more explosions all over the battlefield. Man, I would hate to be in Celestial Empire's shoes right now. You know what? They might need that Noctis ban revoked just so they can come back and salvage their own wrecks. Yeah, I feel like at this point, Tisha are just uh, bullying them, uh, like kicking them around in the arena. Uh, they, they're they just uh, not really taking any damage uh, on the tissue side. In the meantime, the Celestial Empire ships, just everyone are taking damage. They're burning around. They can't really do anything. Just fighting without any hope. And that Crucifier is just mainly ignored. Uh, seems like they don't care about uh, the weapon disruption on that ship. No, they absolutely, ha they don't care at all. They brought a good comp with the Loki, with the Orthruses, the ability to kill both, um, the ability to kill both small things with the Jackdaws and Orthrus, which was an amazing point you pointed out, as well as the Nighthawks and Loki, allowing them to web things down and apply damage to them really well. While we did see a lot of newts, it doesn't matter against a comp that just fires barrages of missiles directly in your face. Yeah, and another ship went down on the Celestial Empire team. It's just one Dracovic, one Curse, and one Pontifex remaining, and they're all three getting stripped of their shield. It's an initial lay of the tank, but uh, even as armor tanks ship, they're taking quickly armor damage as well. Yeah, they are. They're definitely getting these things into low armor. An amazing show of do absolute dominance by psychotic tendencies coming in. Um, you know, they might not be like the most amazing Black Ops droppers on TQ, but they are doing well so far in the tournament. And it's nice to see them able to apply damage and able to get in there and do the things that they want to do with their comps. It's almost like they just know what the enemy is going to bring and they're preparing for it. I'm curious to see how this comp would have fared against maybe a single uh, cruiser style Logi with more control and less newts on it. I'm curious to see sort of that kind of stuff and how that would look. But here we are decisions have been made and uh we're down to the last direct how do you feel about the the match overall miser 
Uh, well, it's just kind of a bloodbath. Uh, you're going to need a lot of tissue to clean up uh, after this, uh, as this Drekovic goes down. So we'll be sending it back to Jen Targaryen, uh, first of his name, uh, father of dragons, and whatever all his tit- uh, titles are in the <laughs> studio. 